Congratulations, you just got your Theta V. You probably are taking some great shots. You go to the park, with the default settings, you'll, you'll get something like this. And it's quite reasonable. And you're pretty happy. Then you go on Facebook and you see guys like Sam Rohn here. And you're like, what the heck, man? How did he get this type of shot? He even tells you HDR D and G. So now you're thinking, wow, okay. He's using HDR, he's using DNG. Should I just stick with the JPEG and edit the JPEG in Lightroom? How close can I get to this type of shot here? If you search for a dual fisheye plugin for the Z1, you'll find Ichi Hirota's app here. You can install it, this is free. Uh, there's some mobile apps that he sells that goes with it, which are well worth the cost. You, you don't actually need the mobile app. You could, uh, you could just use this individual plugin. If you read through it, one of the settings here is HDR DNG. One press, it can take up to nine shots. So if the scene is not moving, this would be a great technique to get a wide range of light values. Then within the camera, you'll have this DNG file. You, you still need to convert it into a format that you can display it on Facebook or put into your portfolio search and you find out that there's a stitcher for the that you're going to need for the dng image the dng image is actually in dual fisheye if you don't have lightroom classic cc do you really need to buy lightroom classic cc in order to stitch the dng are they that closely tied together ichi also has a $14.99, quite a bargain mobile app that can do the stitching. PT GUI also has a template that can do the stitching. PT GUI personal license is $155. And the pro license has is $309. This is good software, but maybe you're just getting started. Maybe you don't really know if you want to use DNG or not, and you just want to stitch it. Um, this demo will leave watermarks. Uh, maybe you don't want or you don't have an Android a tablet or a mobile phone and you want to do it on the desktop. You first need to get the DNG into a TIFF or JPEG format. I'm going to use Darktable. It's open source software. It's not that popular among professional uses. However, it'll do the job. And most importantly, it's free. It's also open source if um, you, know, you, you want that philosophy. So this is not a recommended workflow because Darktable is actually not that popular among the Theta users. I think most people bite the bullet and they get the subscription to Lightroom Classic CC um, and then just use that with the, the Stitcher. But you can use Darktable in this workflow. I'm going to import a single image. So I'll just grab one of the, it's a DNG image. The DNG image is 48 megabytes in size. So if you do grab a DNG, it's going to be fairly large. And it's going to load as a dual fisheye. So at this point, you'd use Darktable to edit the scene I'm not a very good editor with Darktable, so I'll just let's assume that I did a good edit on it and I got the noise out and the highlights are looking good. To start the export process, go to the Light Table tab. And here there's Export Selected. Key thing here is the target storage directory. The target storage directory must be the same directory that your DNG files are in over here. When you got this from the camera, there was a folder that you put your DNG files into. You're going to want to select that as the same directory. So the output at TIFF must be in that same directory as the DNG file. The stitcher will look for it. Select the output. The file name is also very critical. So the file name here, I have this dollar sign in the file name. It's going to take the same file name as the original DNG file over here. And then 
you can have an underscore after it. Uh, in this case, if there's a original existing export, it's just go to the underscore one and then underscore two. That will work. But the front part does need to be the same file name as the DNG file. For TIFF, um, you could do JPEG or TIFF. I'm going to select 16 bit TIFF here and then do the export. All right, so here's the unsupported hack. I've already installed the Rico Theta Stitcher. There's this file, Rico Theta Stitcher dot I and I, and this is the unsupported hack part. So in your home directory on Windows 10, it's users, Craig is my username, app data. It's a hidden subfolder. So you're gonna have to make that viewable in Finder or the Explorer. Then roaming, Rico, Rico Theta Stitcher. You're looking for this file, Rico Theta Stitcher dot I and I. You're gonna have to open up in some type of editor. You could use Notepad and add these just these two lines to it. Okay, let's review it again from the Explorer. So it's in users, and it's the name of your account, which mine is Craig. And then there's a hidden folder called app data. If you don't see this, um, you need to check on that item. Sorry. So when it's not checked, I don't see that app data. So go to view, hidden items. You check it, and then you can see this app data. So click on app data, and then it's in roaming. Then you'll find Rico, not Rico Theta, it's Rico, Rico Theta Stitcher. And then you have this file here, which is the Rico Theta Stitcher dot I, I N I. Just open it in Notepad, it's the same. I'm just using this other, other editor because it's more convenient for me. This is the string you need to add. These two lines, the first is debug, and the second is this enable underscore launch underscore e, e x at c underscore lr equals one. This is a one-time configuration. So after the first time you do this, you can just basically forget where this thing is and you don't have to deal with it again. You will have to find the, the location of the actual stitcher, which is in, prog it's in C program files. It's in Rico Theta Stitcher. So pretty easy to find, right? Because most of your, your applications for your system are gonna be program files anyway. So you can probably find this, and then within that, you can find the stitcher. And then, and then you have the stitcher here. I just changed the name of the uh, TIFF file. So it's the same, the, the beginning part is the same as the original DNG file. And then I have an underscore edited 01, just so that we can distinguish it from the other JPEG images. Um, when it's exported here, or when it's stitched together. So it's a TIFF file that's 133 megabytes in size. And you have the standard metadata here, just to confirm what we're working with, but it is in dual fisheye. So to convert to equirectangular, I'm gonna drag and drop it over the Theta Stitcher app here and it stitches it. Then I'm gonna press OK. You could edit it here if you want a little bit, but it looks good to me. So now it's a 146 megabyte TIFF file. That's now an equirectangular. So I'm gonna check it out in this uh, tool called FSP Viewer. This one's also free.
Thanks for joining us. This just covers the stitching portion of working with DNG images. Most people would actually use the Lightroom CC, Lightroom Classic CC, and the Stitcher. It has better in integration that way. However, if you don't have Lightroom and you just want a quick test, uh, this workflow will also work. Um, you could also use other more advanced software other than Lightroom. There's a whole bunch of other types of programs that people are using right now in lieu of Lightroom with some better editing features. The next thing you should probably do is just to apply standard photo editing techniques to the picture uh, when you're editing the DNG image before you export it. If you still need more um, detail in the lighting, you can try to use the Dual Fisheye plugin for stacking, but that's a little bit more advanced and you'll have to keep the camera still in a tripod during the time that it takes the multiple shots. Thanks for joining us and subscribe to the channel. If you like this type of video, give this one a like and we'll use the feedback to create more videos like this. Have a great day.